Thank you to my friends and colleagues at UNESCO for inviting me to participate in this important colloquium. I am really sorry that I could not be there with you in person today. Journalism under fire could evoke any number of challenges that journalists face worldwide. Physical attack, killing, impunity for such attacks, detention, criminal defamation charges, surveillance, I could go on. At the root of all of these challenges is something familiar and timeless, the desire to clamp down on information, to forbid someone, a journalist, a blogger, a person posting on social media from sharing information, and to forbid many more, the public, from getting access to it. Since November, the world has been consumed with the problem of fake news, something I'm sure you'll take up today. Nobody in this room needs background on it. It emerged as an American concern in the wake of the presidential election, and it has been appropriated by Donald Trump as a hammer against the press he dislikes, leading to his notorious framing of independent American media as enemies of the people. That framing drew nods of approval from authoritarians. Fake news, Disinformation, false news, propaganda has long been an obsession for authoritarian governments. We've traveled a path from legitimate problem, how to deal with the spread, especially online, of intentionally false stories designed to undermine democratic political processes to the authoritarian playbook. So a fundamental challenge to the community of people concerned with the health of journalism and indeed the health of democracy is to deal with this latest iteration of disinformation in a way that ensures the public's right to know. That is, not to solve the problem of fake news by creating a new wave of problems we would have to call censorship. Early this month, I joined with my colleagues in the OSCE, Dunya Miatovic, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, Edison Lanza, and the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, Pansy Tlakula, in our annual Joint Declaration on Freedom of Expression. This year, we took up the issue of fake news, disinformation, and propaganda. I urge people to take a look at the Joint Declaration, which is available online. We all believe strongly that there are standards in international law that can guide governments, companies, and civil society actors in thinking through solutions to the problems posed by fake news. We, in the Joint Declaration, identified a series of principles that we believe are relevant to fighting fake news, and let me highlight some of them now. For those keeping track, I'll identify eight points quickly. First, international law is relevant. Article 19 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights provides that everyone has the right to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers. It does not limit the information to correct information, and it applies across borders and to any media. It provides basic conditions for the imposition of limitations, and I'll get to those momentarily. At the same time, where information amounts to hate speech that constitutes incitement, Article 20 calls upon states to prohibit it. Governments, in my second point, should not hold intermediaries liable for the content posted by users or third, third parties, and I'll quote the Joint Declaration, unless they specifically intervene in that content or refuse to obey an order adopted in accordance with due process guarantees by an independent, impartial, authoritative oversight body, such as a court, to remove it, and they have the technical capacity to do that. Three, restrictions on the sharing of information must be provided by law and necessary and proportionate to protect a legitimate interest. In this context, blocking and filtering of content often fail the test of proportionality and should thus be based strictly on narrow, publicly accessible rules that meet necessity and proportionality guidance. Blanket prohibitions and criminal defamation laws fail the standards of Article 19 and should be re repealed where they currently exist. Four, state actors should avoid disseminating and spreading fake news. As we said in the joint declaration, quote, state actors should not make, sponsor, encourage, or further disseminate statements which they know or reasonably should know to be false, 
or which demonstrate a reckless disregard for verifiable information, end quote. Not only that, but states should be promoting and disseminating themselves accurate information about government, public health, the environment, and other matters of public interest. Five, the Joint Declaration also emphasizes the importance of the state creating and fostering an environment conducive to free and independent media. That includes independent broadcast regulation and support for public service media. It also is essential to include media and digital literacy as elements of a healthy, free media environment. Six, of course, particularly in a digital era, states are only part of the picture. It's now also the case that private actors, social media, search, telcos, others, play a significant, if not a dominating role in the information ecosystem. They develop their own rules regarding content. The Joint Declaration highlights principles of clarity, such that content rules are based on objective rather than ideological or political criteria, transparency, such that users have access to the rules and understand how they are enforced, minimum due process, such that users have notice of action against content and the opportunity of appealing such action, and finally, user autonomy and control. Seven, so too does the media have a critical role to play. The media should support appropriate self-regulation that strives to achieve the highest standards of accuracy in the news. They should also include coverage of the phenomena of disinformation and propaganda, as we put it, in line with their watchdog role in society. And eighth, finally, multi-stakeholderism. All stakeholders should be involved in seeking solutions to disinformation and propaganda or fake news. Some civil society efforts, such as fact-checking programs, are critical to the search for solutions, and both governments and companies should be consulting with non-governmental actors moving forward. That's actually an appropriate note on which to conclude. The challenges facing journalism today are not insurmountable. They are daunting, it's true, but they can be mitigated and addressed through engagement with internet, intergovernmental organizations like UNESCO and the great number of NGOs, journalists, activists, companies, and others worldwide. I look forward to working with all of you on these and other challenges. Thank you.